Hey there, Bike Blogger here. It's the end of winter, time for a change. I already replaced my bicycle chain. You should always do that after winter is over and the streets have been pretty much cleared by a good spring rain. Uh, I'm also gonna replace now the brake cables on my single speed Moto Beacon Cafe bicycle. Um, and what I'm also gonna do, a change, I'm going to replace these handlebars. I'm going to replace these handlebars with uh, bullhorn handlebars. Here's the bullhorn handlebars. So what do we need to do to make this happen, to get the bullhorn handlebars on this bike? Well, we're going to remove the cables. We're going to do new cables. We're going to remove the bars. But also what I'd like to do is replace this stem with a different stem. This stem is 80 millimeters uh, long. I want, to, I want to replace it with a 100 millimeter long stem, a longer stem that will stretch me out more on the bike. Um, I also got a, a, actually a totally different stem because I'm not certain, I might, I might do a different angle on this stem rather than it rising up like this. I could flip the stem, might, might do that, we'll see. Um, but yeah, the first step is going to be pretty much to remove all these cables. And what I decide, what I think I'm going to do, what I think I'm going to do is run the cable rather than underneath the top tube. I'm going to run it on the top of the top tube with some uh, some cable holders, sort of like I have going on with this bike right here. So it will basically look like this bike right here when I'm done. That's the idea. So to remove the cables, I'm going to release the cable tension. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's loosen this up. Get the cable out of there. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and snip it now. So these little guys are called cable donuts. They'll prevent your cable from rattling on your top tube. Let's pull the cables out. See, here's a cable housing. I can just pull this out and take the inner cable out. Squeeze this, just push this through, pops out like this. Hope the camera's catching that. Oh boy, messing up my frame. Pull that out, that was loud. All right, we got my bike computer on the stem here. Um, but first I need to take off my stuff mounted to my bars. If you're wondering why am I wearing gloves for all this, um, actually I don't know myself. <laughs> I'm not really dealing with anything messy right now. It's just a habit though to try to keep things clean, particularly my hands. Even though my work environment's pretty dirty, um, or pretty looking disorganized, I sort of feel like I know where my stuff is. One of the reasons I got cardboard down there so I can hear something hit the ground and maybe find it a little easier since the ground is sort of dark in here. I need to remove the bike computer. Um, I got some zip ties holding the stocking station down. Actually I also use um, electrical tape to hold the unit actually on the mount because I've had them fly off before. And I've lost two of them that way without even realizing it one time. Jaws. Alright, looking good. Um, we will remove. Yeah, look at that. I got no brakes. Ah! Actually, I got brakes on the bike, just no cables. I wonder what would happen if you tried to squeeze the brake caliper while you're riding the bike. Seems like that'd be dangerous without using a cable. All right, so let's go ahead and remove the handlebars. There's a bolt here and a bolt here. They look like maybe six millimeter. I was wrong. Five millimeter, that's the ticket. Again, for people who don't understand what I'm to doing here, these are the handlebars. This is the stem. This thing here is a stem, headset, stem. Let's Remove the handlebars by just taking these bolts off. Handlebars! Handlebars! Some bar tape that's coming off again. 
bar end that sort of has an end cap popping off there and brake levers levers so to remove the bicycle stem what you do is you remove this top cap and then you remove these two bolts here you these two bolts here um, which are clamping onto the steer tube here um, this is a threadless stem I don't do any quill stuff with the wedges and all that goodness. Old fashioned stuff. Nothing wrong with that. It's just not what I'm doing here. Um, there's a chance that when I take the stem off that the fork down here will fall out, especially if I have the weight of the wheel on here still. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to screw with that. I'm not going to take the wheel off. I don't bother with that. I'm going to take the wheel or take the wheel, take the bike and the wheels down. I'm going to set them down on the ground. So they'll be pushing back up and it should all be good. Nothing should fall out on me. So let's go ahead and do that. Careful. Okay. So now let's remove the stem top or the, yeah, the top cap, the headset top cap here. Off we go. Look nasty inside. Set it down. All right. Now we'll loosen these stem bolts. It should be on pretty tight because, uh, you know, they were uh, sort of hold your bike together. All right, um, I think I got them pretty loose. Let's see if we can just lift. Get down here. See if we can just lift the stem off. Whoop, okay. I wanted to go a little slower just to show you. So we're going to lift the stem off. Zoop. There's a fork. A uh, steerer tube. Why they call it a steerer tube? Because it steers your bike. Okay. <laughs> All right, so if I flip this stem, I don't think there's any reason why I can't flip it. And now look at it. Okay, this is what I was wondering. I was wondering if the stem would, was going to be sort of straight, like flat, like parallel with the ground. And it looks like it is, pretty much. It's a little... Uh, it's a little... There's a little bit of rise, I think. I want to try to get it flat. Um, no, no big deal. Uh, I do have another stem though, so I'm going to try that. The longer stem that I got. Notice that my steerer tube here is a couple millimeters below the top uh, plane or top surface of my stem here. You want that. If the steer tube was sticking out, like see these are just spacers. I can move these around however I want. If I took like a couple spacers off, put the stem on, I could add some spacers up here. I just need enough so that again, there we go, I got like a couple millimeters. So again that, that metal, that silver metal is a couple millimeters below the top here. Because then my cap would, uh, let me grab it. Then my cap would go on like that. It looks sort of goofy. Uh, if you don't got the spacers or you don't want the spacers, well, what do you do? You just obviously just cut the steerer tube down. Of course, be careful how much you cut because once it's gone, it is gone. So, um,. What else? Uh, you, cut, you cut it with a hacksaw, you know, put some muscle into it. <laughs> so, um, I wouldn't use a pipe cutter really, I don't think. I, mean, I guess you could. Um, all right, so I'm going to grab the other stem now and see what that looks like. Don't fall over. So here's my other stem. Uh, it's a dimension stem. I like it because it's sort of the gloss black. Uh, it, it takes 26 millimeter um, diameter handlebars 
you know, so I don't need any sort of shims, mess with any of that sort of stuff. So it's got a very basic logo on there, so it's, it's really sort of, you know, low key, which is sort of what I wanted. It's got four bolts instead of just those two big ones on that stem over there. Uh, Dimension is a, I think, quality bike products, QB, P, uh, which is a big corporation or whatever that produces a lot of um, bicycles that are not of the big three, that being Specialized, Giant, and Trek. Um, QBP does things like Surly bikes. And uh, this is some of the sort of generic stuff that they might stick on their bikes, I guess, like a dimension stem. Uh, anyway, so let's take a look, see what this looks like on my bike. Let's take a look, let's take a look, let's take a look. All right, so bye-bye, bye-bye old stem. Hello, new stem. So, let's see. That looks pretty flat to me. All right, so we got a flat stem. How did I know uh, that this new stem was gonna be flat with the ground? Why would you want that? I'm not getting into that question. But how did I know it would be flat? Because the angle here, it's 73, that's the angle here. So to get to 90 degrees from here, all the way up to here, or all the way up to here, I need to make it up with 17 degrees. So this is a 17 degree stem. Flip it over. Oh my gosh, we got a high rise. But flip it back, and we're flat. Um, this might be sold as a, as a uh, 17 degree stem. It might be sold as a 107 degree stem, um, which is 17 degrees above 90 degrees. I don't really understand it. I don't do a lot of stuff with stems, so I don't really care if someone wants to chime in, they can about that sort of stuff. But, uh, so yeah, this is what I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using this. And again, you know, the important thing I talked about before, I wanna make sure I got the steerer tube sunken in a little bit, so then I can just put the top cap right on top of that. Um, I got a little, uh, I took a sticker off here, so I'm gonna clean that up right now. I hate stickers. I hate decals, I hate logos, I hate ads on my bikes. But I have them on, on a couple. Looking good. All right, we're down here again. Let's go ahead and stick our stem on. Looking good, looking good. Now what do you do? Put that top cap on. Gonna reuse the old top cap, no reason why I can't. We're gonna screw around with this a little bit more later. Let's go ahead and tighten on the stem bolt. Um, yeah, we're gonna screw around. We're gonna get the, the preload on the bearings, you know, correct once I got handlebars on here. And we'll get it all straight and everything, but what I want to do is just stick some handlebars on and start doing up the cables and all that goodness. And we're going to get back to this last, I think. Uh, you might not have noticed before, but there is actually a slight sloping of my top tube here on this single speed bike. Most bikes have a sloping top tube. I prefer the straight top tube, which is what I think we got going on with my Wabi and with this Le Monde over here, this older uh, uh, early 2000s Le Monde bicycle. Um, I prefer the straight look. The reason why manufacturers do not do the straight look of a, of a straight top tube is because of sizing. It's harder to sell a bike when you can only fit certain you know, people on the bike. You know, the, the bike fit is more difficult when you have a straight top tube. Um, and people just, they, some people come from a mountain biking background or childhood with the sloping top tube. It's easier to step over the top tube that way, obviously. Um, 
All you really got to do is lean the bike down a little bit to get over it, but yeah, you know, it's more inclusive, a sloping top tube, but I prefer the flat top tube. And I got my stem flat because I prefer it that way. Is, is that going to make me more aero? Is that going to make me less comfortable? Maybe. Take a look at these handlebars. They're sort of dirty. What you should do is clean them up before you mount them on the stem. So when you're riding, all of a sudden, do 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 do, stem, it isn't really, you know, it's sort of slippery and like, Whoop. you know, you stick some, some sort of uh, grip paste or something in there to hold on to the bars. But if I crank them down really hard, eh, it might be good enough. Might be, might be, might be. So um, five, nope, no longer five. I think we're at four. Should grease up, you should always grease up your bolts. I didn't grease up the, you know, the stem bolts. Um, they come with a little bit of grease on them. Trick here is again, when you're tightening these down, I think I talked about this before, you sort of do it in a star pattern or an X pattern. Uh, there's nothing special about doing it in a certain pattern. It's just a matter of getting an equal amount of threads in these thread holes on all four of them. So it's, you know, evenly, um, loaded on the stem. Where are we? Where are we going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh my gosh! I'm going to edit this this video so, 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 so I'm going to edit this video so much I don't know if I'm even gonna upload it now. I'm too embarrassed. I think it's like a rule. It's supposed to take 10 times longer when you're doing this stuff, when you're talking to yourself and commenting and thinking lots of people are watching you while you're doing it and criticizing you for not doing it the right way or what they think is the right way. I want to get this centered on here. Get the eight ball right in the middle. Origin 8 or originate? How do you pronounce that? Originate or origin 8? Zoop, zoop. Zoop, zoop, zoop. Zoop, 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 zoop. I'm going to have to adjust all this stuff in a moment, and I am going to. Now I'm sort of comparing the handlebar position on my other bike here because I like it and it's basically it's basically level with the ground I think. What do I mean by that? The bars are basically this part here is basically straight level. They might be up a little bit so we'll just go with that. I'm going to tighten the handlebar bolts further now. Wow, this feels so much better. I like this a lot. Yeah. Love it. It's not exactly center, so I have to move it. It's the law. Get that eight ball over a little. There we go. It was off by one millimeter. That would have totally knocked off 10% of my performance. My efficiency would have dropped drastically. I'm tightening this down pretty darn tight. I remember tightening a bolt once. I think it might have been a seat post binder slash seat post, post collar uh, bolt. And I actually snapped it. I put so much torque on it that it was like, you know, it wasn't helping anymore. I was just putting more stress on it than I needed to. Uh, and by that I mean the bolt that, that goes on here that holds the seat post in. So yeah, that one there, down there. This is sort of glossy and this is glossy. I love it. It sort of matches pretty darn well. This is actually quite dirty though. <laughs> well, for now, I'll just straighten the fork here. So the wheel is straight with the bike and we'll go ahead and tighten down the stem bolts again. Okay, let's go ahead and reinstall our um, accessories. Very important to note with your accessories when you're doing with cables and stuff, you got to be able to turn the bike all the way or pretty much all the way. I mean, I don't know if you're really going this far unless you're doing some sort of tricks. How does bike blogger 
install his bicycle computer docking station. Well, since you have to ask, zip ties, that's how we do it here. We do zip ties. Okay, so I got a very long strand of cable housing. Uh, I got an end cap on the end of the cable housing and uh, this end cap here will go in the back of the brake lever right here like that and then what I'm going to do is use electrical tape and tape this cable housing onto the handlebars the way I want it to be looking so let's go ahead and do that all right let's go ahead and cut that now. let's do another one tape it at another point. I'm going to tape it at the midpoint here. Now this cable housing is going to come across this way. This is the way I want to route it. You can go ahead and tell me I'm doing it wrong, but this is the way I want to route it. I need to make sure I have enough cable to turn the bars all the way. And this should do it. I'm going to cut the cable housing like about here to begin with. Cut the housing. You can sort of go like this, get it started, and then cut it. Got a pin cap. Let's go ahead and use that. There it is. It's opened up. Make sure it's opened up. Now I will be putting a ferrule end cap on the other end here like that and then this is just going to sit in here like that obviously I need to cut this more though so I got these cable housing um, holders now is as good a time as any to go ahead and install them so that's what I'm gonna do all right so I'm gonna sort of spread this out now get it where I want it not too worried about the paint finish on this thing. Okay, so I need to be able to go all the way around like that. Okay. All right, and then this will go in here. I need a I need it, I need it to be a bent a little bit, at least to make things a little easier. Um, so maybe up to here or something. So I'm gonna cut it like right there. Uh, you rear brake. As far as I know, always needs a longer cable. We got two cables here. One is short and one is long. So let's go ahead and take the long cable. We'll set the shorter cable down for now. We'll come back to that in a moment. We got two different type of cable ends. We got pear shaped. This is like a mushroom or a pear. And then we got like barrel shaped. And for these brake levers, they use a barrel shape. So I don't need this end. So we're going to cut it off. Because when I squeeze a brake lever here, look at that. It matches a barrel shape. So we'll go ahead and just stick this in there like that. And we're going to feed our cable through. Right through here, there's a hole in here, which is where this cable is now resting in. And we're just going to push it through nice and easy. All right, now the cable is going through all this housing, you can't, this, this sheath. You can't see it, but it's going through. See, it's popping out over here now. Just pull through. There's a little bit left here. Just keep pulling it through. There we go. Here's our cable. Always important to make sure you're cable, your inner cable, this, this uh, metal winding of a cable here is longer than your outer cable, your sheath, your cable housing. Because if it's shorter, then it's going to be hidden somewhere in here. And no matter how many times you're cutting on it, you know, to get it the right length, it's always going to be too, it needs to be longer, basically, is what I'm getting at. So uh, depending on what order you're doing stuff in, you might have cut too much of one thing and it could be a big issue. So you have to start over basically. All right, so let's get our ferrule here. 
that's going to go on this end. Here's our inner cable housing. We'll just take our end cap right here. And we'll go ahead and slip this on just like that. It comes all the way up into here. And this will just sit on here like this, like a this. -a. There we go. Now I can cut this cable. This cable is way too long. So let's go ahead and cut some of it for now. I'm going to leave plenty extra still, but I'm going to cut down that cable a bit. We don't need all this excess. All right. Brake cable just simply goes straight through here. Uh, and then it goes through this cable clamp bolt like that. And this end cap just slips right into that thing there. All right. And we're all good. We got plenty of length of cable here. So for setting this rear brake caliper, this is a quick release thing. Let's go ahead and sort of open it up. Squeeze the brake calipers so they're, you know, sort of, you know, closing in on the, the wheel, but not all the way. Go ahead and tighten down this bolt. I'm not even pulling on the brake cable right now. All right. And then we'll go ahead and push down the quick release. It'll tighten it further. Let's go ahead and squeeze, squeeze the brake lever. Looks nice. Yeah, so that's basically how you do it. All right, so now we got the rear brake installed. Let's go ahead and do the front brake cable. Same process. Uh, I just need a bit of cable here and it's going to stick in the back here of the brake lever. I'm going to wrap it around like this and it's going to come down and go in there. This cable I think is plenty long already so all I need are cable ends. Again those are ferrules. So let's grab some ferrules. Let's make sure that this is opened up nice and good so the cable is going to have no, the inner cable is going to have no problem slipping through this outer cable slash uh, sheath here cable housing just want to make sure it's nicely opened up end cap over the end like that and slip it in here and let's get busy with that electrical tape again might actually be a little easier to do if it was warmer right now. It's still sort of cold outside and so the adhesive and things don't want to really stick so well right now. It also helps to have a clean surface to stick to. No matter how far I turn this it doesn't really affect anything so I just need to cut it just enough to get down here. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. That was a great cut. Okay. Let's open it up. There you are, hiding from me. Hiding from me, are you? Okay. Let's get the inner cable. Here we go, inner cable, Cha ching inner cable. Let's go ahead and cut the, the end that we don't need again. You, we got a pear shaped end and the barrel end. I want the barrel end. So this end goes away. Let's just go ahead and cut it off here. Cut it off. All right, so let's go ahead and squeeze the, the brake lever here. Go ahead and put the barrel in there like that. And then this end goes straight through inside here. Da, 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 da. Intermission. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. All right. Send this through. It's already popping out over here. Cable end cap here. Go through that little ferrule. A 
All right, just like the other one, send it through here. And we'll send it through our Send it through this little screwy. We need to loosen this thing here on the end. For some reason it's like on here really tight. There's a little there's a little screw on here. I want to loosen this a little bit. There we go. All right. Now. See, now this is working like it's supposed to. For I don't know why that was tight. I might have actually tightened it. Didn't know what I was doing. Again, let's open up the quick release there. I'm gonna, so squeeze the brake calipers against the close, close, close-ish, ish, ish to the rim. We'll go ahead and tighten this down now. Close the quick release. It's a little too tight. Open the quick release. It's just fine. I just have this on too tight. Let's loosen it a little. Let some slack out. Let's go ahead and retighten it now. Close the quick release. Squeeze the front brake lever. All is good. Double check, make sure this is on nice and tight. Double check, make sure this one's on nice and tight. And I want to put on my brake cable end caps. Let's go ahead and do that now. Brake cable end cap looks like this. Well, this is a Jaguar one, just happens to look this color. Uh, I got more cable than I need right there. Let's trim it down further. Hmm. Trim a little more of it off here. I'll leave a little sticking out. Eh, trim a little bit off of here too. I just like to always leave extra. That's just me. Put that on there. And we'll just go ahead and squeeze. Squeeze. Squeeze, please. <sighs> Doesn't have to be really tight. <laughs> go. You don't need to do one of these end cap things. It's just to try to prevent it from fraying. Does it really work uh, long term? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I've really kept my cables so long without changing them out to really notice if they started to fray or not, if it really helped much at all anyway. Um, it looks nice and clean and done though, like that. So the bars move around just fine. We're all good there. Um, so I'm gonna finish up, like I was talking about tightening up this stuff up here. Um, uh, again, I sort of just wanna take the bike down and we'll do it on the ground. I'm really not concerned about the fork falling out or anything, but I don't wanna mess with, again, removing the wheel and everything. Make sure that these uh, bars are, bar bolts are on nice and tight. Again, make sure you grease your bolts. Always a good thing. Always a good thing. All right, so I'm gonna loosen this. I'm gonna loosen these bolts here. I got my stem bolts and my uh, top cap bolt. I'm just loosening all these. I'm not going to loosen them completely. Uh, but I'm going to get them pretty loose and a little bit tight. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this top cap until the point where there's no play when I squeeze like this uh, front brake lever. I can feel I can feel it moving a little bit. And if I were to bounce this, I don't want to bounce it right now though because I'm trying to keep this all together. Uh, you would hear a rattling noise or something. So I'm just gonna tighten this down. You know, this is what they call, I think, a preload. Hope oh, nothing's in the way of the camera there. Uh, preload or whatever the, of the headset bearings. So 
it feels nice and good now, but you don't want it really tight because the tighter you do this top cap, the more pressure you're putting on the bearings inside here, which allow you to steer. Um, <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. You don't really need to steer much on a bike. You need more lean, but anyway. Um, uh, anyway, uh, so you want to loosen this up just to the point where it, you don't feel like you're getting any play. And then that's just fine. It doesn't have to be, it, it, you're not going to get it really tight. It's not the point. That seems pretty good to me. So now, again, these bolts here are still loose, my stem bolts. I want, because see, look at this. I can move my wheel like crazy in either direction. I need my wheel straight with my handlebars because I'm not used to riding like this down the road. <laughs> so let's straighten our handlebars. Sometimes it can be a little easier to get over the bike. All right, so we're sitting on the top tube of the bike. Ow. Okay, and we are getting the front wheel straight with the handlebars. Seems pretty straight. And now we will tighten down the stem bolts evenly again always evenly we are almost there believe it or not all right looking good got our accessories on there now all we got to do is the bar tape so i'm going to start at the end here and work my way toward the middle uh so let's do it Uh, a good bar tape job really makes a bike feel a lot nicer. Um, so if you have to redo your bar tape, don't fret about it. Um, in any case, it's probably going to be better when you're done with it, even if you have to do it multiple times to get it just right. How about that? That's just perfect, isn't it? So, I like that, and then I'm going to do electrical tape over it. All right, got a little more, got some more electrical tape here. All right, let's do the other side now. All right, so we're gonna do the, the right side of the handlebar now. The right side handlebar. I just like to uh, peel off all this backing. Got the cable sort of sticking out of there a little bit. That's all right. All right, so just about done now. We're gonna cover this up now with more electrical tape. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. Looks good. Turns completely. Folks, I think we're done. So there you have it. Motor Beacon Cafe with the bullhorn handlebars. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. If you got any, any questions, comments, leave them in the section below this video. And thanks for watching. We'll see you out there.